Well, hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Duro. I'm Marilyn Duro. And we are here to talk about wonderful, good, simple eating of great foods that give you some recipes and give you some hints about cooking. And Marilyn, one of the things I'd like to talk about today to start this out is what they're is now in the news, the Mediterranean diet, which is supposedly a diet that is good for you. And I agree with it. It's been out for quite a while, and it also is the basically that you use the right fats, which basically they recommend olive oil. Ta-da! Uh, they have nuts, legumes. Uh, it's also portion control, and it's how you eat. It's not really a diet, per se, to lose weight. It's a diet that you, it's a lifestyle. This is how you eat that you cook your own food, that you use these good things for you, and the combination of those good things, which are the, the right amount of protein, the right amount of uh, fat, and the right amount of vegetables, uh, provides, a, uh, supposedly, you'll live longer and have a better life. Well, they, so. they just recently done some studies that shows that the Mediterranean style of, of life, uh, that people live longer. Uh, and uh, you know they have they got another diet out there now, which you for two days you have 500 calories per day, and the rest of the time you eat all you want. Well, that's not that's that's a fad diet. You're not going to live long. You're going to live less time. Well, supposedly your stomach shrinks. Yeah. I, I unless I can believe these things, I think what you when you talk about how you eat, it's it's a way of life. It's a way of thinking about what is good for your body, the amount of calories you take in, the amount of calories that you take out, that you expediate out, however you do that, whether you're doing exercise or walking or whatever you're doing. So it's what's good for you. So and, and what tastes good is important also. Yeah, it's got to taste good. It's got to you got to enjoy doing it. Uh, and another aspect of this uh, study is that a family that sits down and eats together, that the family uh, lives longer, lives a healthier life, the kids are more adjusted as they grow up. So it's got all kinds of great things. Basically what we do is somewhat very similar to what the Mediterranean diet does. Uh, so that's what we're gonna talk about. I, okay. I think we've pontificated long enough. I think enough. so. Let's get on with some of our <laughs> recipes and some of the things that we're doing. Last time we were we were talking, uh, I I showed you a couple couple of things. One is is this little. Can you see it? What what is this? This is to make gnocchis, and what you do is you roll out the gnocchis and you cut them into about about a thumb size or smaller size, and you put it on this this thing and you roll it across here and you get a gnocchi. I don't like it. If I'm going to make gnocchis, which is a pain, I'm going to I'm going to cut them. All the family's going to come in and we have a one ding or a two ding gnocchi. And the way you do that is you put your fingers on the gnocchi and you go what? And if you use two fingers, that's a two ding. If you, you use one finger, it's a one ding. You can also do it with a fork. Yeah, um, but, it, the, but the fact is that if you're doing something as a family and doing it together, again, it becomes an activity, a joyful activity, and fun, and it gives you a way of um, camaraderie and ta being able to be with your total family. And you know what the most important thing that is talked about at the dinner table or at the luncheon table with an uh, with a Italian family? No. Huh? What we're gonna have for the next meal? Right. right? What's for dinner? <laughs> what's for dinner? <laughs> or what's for the next lunch? So, uh, food plays an important part of our lives, and it's a it's a great time to enjoy it. Okay, next item that we showed last week is this contraption. Uh, this thing slides back and forth. This is a development of the uh, of, of of Germany. And it's made to make a pasta called spatzel. Is that what that yes, is? Yes, spatzel. And the way it works is you make a dough, which is made of eggs and flour and water, and you put it into this hoop right here. And you put it on top of a, 
of boiling salted water and you push this back and forth, back and forth, and, the, and it comes out at the bottom and it boils and then you have little ringlets uh, of, of pasta. Now the Germans, what they do is they'll take it from there and they, they uh, cook about a pound and a half of bacon and take mm -hmm. this and put it in the grease and mm -hmm. it ain't good. You don't want to do that, <laughs> right? In fact, that using that machine isn't, so I've got, I've showed you two things that are useless basically, but that's what I showed you. If you wanted to make spatzel, you could take a, uh, what do you call that thing, Marilyn? You a mill, a, a food mill. A food mill. And you just yeah, and you, let it go through any kind of a sieve you could use. Right. Um, a, but you need something with some kind of hole, but a food mill or a, a, anything like that, and just put it over the boiling water. And they rice the top. It only takes a minute or yes. so. And then you can use and any delicious. kind of delicious. They're also kind of can be used. They used them a lot with, um, if you have something with gravy in it, you know, some kind of dish that had a gravy base or a sauce base, then you just served that, and then you could put your, your meat, uh, your dish over it. Yeah. This is what, you can buy them dried. It looks like this, and they're called Spatzel's Swabian Egg Noodles, homemade. So they're basically an egg noodle. That's yeah, an egg noodle in a different form. So it's another form of an egg noodle. Okay, so now we've covered those two things, those two useless <laughs> things that I brought. I don't know why I brought them, but anyways, I, I brought them over. Um, I'd like to... We're going to finish up with what well, we talked about pasta last time. I'm going to do a couple more recipes uh, uh, for pasta. And one of the recipes, I really, really like this recipe. We don't have to have pasta in sauce all the time, all right, in a tomato sauce. We have kids. We'd like to get vegetables in them, right? So we have to disguise the vegetable. And we, love, and we know the kids love macaroni and cheese. Well, this is macaroni ch and cheese with cauliflower in it. And you're gonna say, oh my God, this guy's <laughs> gone nuts. But it, it, it works and it comes out, you bake it with the pasta and the kids really like it. <clears throat> so I got a recipe in here we, where we use the cauliflower, we cut it into florets and we use, a, I use a thing called a bamboo steamer. steamer. And you put the put it in here, and you put it on top of a of a thing, a uh, boiling water on the top, and you and you steam it on top. To me, it's really, really the way to go with vegetables. And you can buy these at uh, at the outlet malls. Got them, uh, and they're not that expensive. This is a big one. There's a smaller one. They run ten, fifteen, twenty bucks at most. Most Asian stores, if you're going uh, to an Asian store, they'll have them also. But they are very handy, and and steaming vegetables does two things. It also keeps all the nutrients in it, so that you're not boiling away your vitamins and nutrients. That's right. Uh, so it's a much more healthy way. So you're getting all the good things of the vegetable by steaming it. So what I would do with this recipe is I would take the florets. I put it in that bamboo steeler, steamer. <clears throat> I'll put a sliced up onion there. I'll put two cloves of garlic. You can't cook without garlic, right? And I'll steam it for about 10 minutes. And I pull it out and I put it into a, a Cuisinart, a food processor, add some milk, some dried mustard, some salt and black pepper, and puree it. Then add a little cheddar cheese and Parmesan and then some Parmesan. Cook your macaroni, whatever kind of macaroni you want, and mix it together. Mix it together with, with this wonderful cauliflower and cheese mixture. Put it in a baking pan, and uh, you're going to top it with some more cheese and maybe some, some breadcrumbs. And one uh, kind of breadcrumb that I think is really great is called panko, P-A-N-K-O. It's a Japanese breadcrumb. I get some affiliation here between the Japanese and the Chinese and the Italians, but anyways. And it's a really nice bread, breadcrumb. Uh, Wegmans has it. Uh, uh, any Chinese uh, grocery store has it. I think that they are much better product than the what you call the the packaged breadcrumbs. So if you want to change to panko, right. I think you'll enjoy that. You can use that for any kind of breading. So you cover that w with the panko, some cheese. You put it, put it in the oven, 375 for 30, 35 minutes, and you're done. 
The type of pasta I like to use is a small size penne, the penete or penne, or you can use shells, you can use anything you want. Elbows. Uh, elbows. They're good. Again, we're talking about do your own thing. You don't like it that way? Fine, change it. But uh, that's what it's all about. So uh, I want you to try that. And I bet you, I bet you the kids, don't tell them what it is. I bet you they like it. It's a good dish. Marilyn, I want to talk about uh, a place that is very fond in, uh, in our hearts, Florence. Italy. We, we really <clears throat> enjoyed, we had two trips to um, Florence. One of them consisted of our middle child getting married, <laughs> our middle son, uh, which was great fun. And the whole family met outside of, they were married in a small town called Londa. And uh, we had an absolutely wonderful time. Everyone came. We have three sons, and everyone came. And it was a real celebration. And then the <clears throat> other time, we were there with some friends of ours, our cousins. And uh, we were strolling through downtown Florence, and we were trying to find some place to eat. We're always trying to find some <laughs> good place to eat. And we came across a place called La Cava, and, which means the cave. <clears throat> and they have a dish there called riboletta, which means cook twice. And the story behind, the, and it, they're famous for this dish, never had it before in my life. And they're, they, uh, they really do it well. And there's a story behind this. Back in the days of the Medici, the de Medici family controlled Florence, they ordered uh, their servants to make bread plates and to serve the food on bread plates. Well, they, the people, uh, the, the Medici ate the food, but they didn't eat the bread plates. Now, the bread plates were all, all this wonderful food that was on it was, you know, <laughs> going into the bread, bread plates. So the, uh, the servants decided to take that and make a soup out of it called a riboletta. That's one story. The other story is that in Tuscany, there's no salt in the bread uh, when they make it. It only lasts for one day, so they got to figure out a a way of, of, uh, of doing it. So they do. They make a lot of soups that have bread based uh, because of the lack of salt in their bread, although it's a delicious bread. Um, but basically this is a, a mixture of leftovers, <laughs> basically, and a, vegetables. You can put about anything you want. In. You get a Here big again pot. again is something that you do on your own. Right. You're going you're gonna to puree some, uh, some, uh, some beans. Get a can of beans, open it up, get the water out of it or the stuff of it, put a couple cloves of garlic, some onions, some carrots, some sage, a little salt and pepper, put it in a pot, put some diced tomatoes in it, put some, oh, you got uh, cabbage, put green, cabbage any in Any kind it. of green. Escarole. Uh, kale, uh, whatever, you know, escarole, spinach, whatever. Any green is very good in this. And then add thing. some chicken stock to it and cook it, all right? And cook it for oh, about an hour, hour and a half till everything you know starts to really get melt. You got to put olive oil in there too. Olive oil, okay? Did I mention olive oil? Well, you can always put olive oil at, at the very last. Oh, I think I will. You do it at the <laughs> end <laughs> when you're ready to serve it. Just put a little uh, olive oil over the top of it. It would give it a very good flavor. So now, after this, this uh, you cook this for a while. You take this stale old bread, this day old bread, okay? And you get a, a, a baking dish that's got about, oh, four or five inches in height. And you olive oil on the bottom of the dish. You break up uh, the stale bread and put that on the, uh, over the olive oil. Take some pesto. We talked about pesto and how we, I, I make pesto in a big container and I freeze it. Dribble some pesto over the top. Add this, uh, the soup that you have and layer it up, okay? And you, ended up, and you end up uh, with the soup on top, and then you take some breadcrumbs and some cheese, and you drizzle a little olive oil over the top, and you put it in the oven, and it becomes nice and brown, and the crust is there with the wonderful Parmesan cheese. And this place that we ate it in, in uh, Florence, they served it in crocks, like you would onion soup. And it's bubbling. And they make a big flourish about it. They bring it to the table. They get some wonderful extra virgin olive oil, and they drizzle it over the top of there, and they serve it. And it is an absolutely wonderful dish, easy to make, good for you. 
It's got all kinds of things going for it. So if you ever get to Florence, I don't know if it's still there, Marilyn, you think? I have no idea, but you can certainly get Rivoletta in, in Florence, I'm sure. And then it's well known there. And then you go down the street a while, and you go by the place that has ice cream. Oh, well, there's an ice cream. Tell them what it is. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> yes, it's, um, Gelato. No, gelato. And that is wonderful. And th uh, the thing about gelato, and you can get gelato here in Seneca Falls if you, uh, at Noni's. Great legit uh, but gelato. But gelato though. does not have the same amount of milk fat as ice cream does. It uh, is made, well, I'm not sure, but it doesn't have the same amount of fat in it. And it's absolutely delicious. And I think one of my most favorite f flavors is pistachio. Yeah, it's surprising. They have all kinds of flavors, but that's one of them that's and really it delicious. It's creamier. It it's is creamier very, it's very than, smooth uh, than ice cream. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> we did that. So go to Florence, enjoy. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, spending some time with us. We surely have enjoyed telling you about what we like to do. We like to cook. We like to sit down with our family. We like to talk. And what do we talk about? Food. food. Good food. Not crazy, crazy diet mm -hmm. food, Mediterranean diet food, olive oil, glass of wine, you know, good things. And it's an enjoyment, and it, that way of life makes you live longer, makes you healthier, makes you happier. Look at, look at how happy we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've enjoyed our, uh, our little set two here today. We're gonna be back to you in a couple weeks. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, put them on a, Feel Send them to us. Yeah, feel you free. Any, you, you have anything you want to talk about? Let us know. Perfect. You have anything that might you want to change, you don't like, we like, I'll, I'll listen to it. I don't know if we're going to do it or not, <laughs> but we'll see. So uh, you have a good week, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.